I've made a lot of uncalculated decisions in my life, but I may have suffered the most from this one. Coffee is a multi-billion dollar industry, often making it the first stimulant that most people consume in the morning, providing the relaxing ritual of brewing and drinking it, which was certainly the case for me. Now you may be wondering why I'm quitting caffeine for a month, and I bet the answer isn't what you're expecting. I have two reasons. The first one is that it's very important to do hard things, and as I expected, this stretched me a lot and required more of me than I thought I was going to have to get. The second reason is that I don't like that my energy and productivity was dependent on something other than myself. Sure, it's fine to have, you know, boosts and little pick-me-ups and things that enhance our productivity and energy, but I was getting to the place where I was completely dependent on it and I couldn't function very well without it. So I decided to press reset. Tomorrow will be the first day in over four years that I go a complete day without caffeine. Here's to the next 30 days with no caffeine. This ought to be fun. I finished my ceremonial cup of joe and braced myself for my inevitable demise. But it never happened. The first day came and went like normal. I got my work done with no ill side effects. Not gonna lie, at this point, I was actually really proud of myself because I was like, yo, for coming off of this cold turkey with no side effects the first day, I was like, either Either I'm not as wildly addicted to caffeine as I thought I was, or by sheer willpower and <laughs> brute force awesomeness, I convinced myself to have zero side effects. And then day two happened. On the second day, I woke up with a very odd sensation. Something like a pickaxe slowly being embedded in the back of my skull. It was located right at my brainstem and pulsed with each heartbeat. My mind felt sluggish and it took me a while to realize that the headache may in fact be from the caffeine or the lack thereof. The day was a blur of pain and brain fog, but not unbearable, just annoying. As I drifted off to sleep that night, I was optimistic that by morning, my headache would be gone and I'd basically be normal again. Curveball number two. Day three was worse. Take everything I felt the day before and double it. My headache was excruciating. I couldn't focus for more than a few minutes at a time, and I couldn't even find solace in the routine of my morning. But that wasn't even the worst part. Today I have two miseries to add to the list, two new ones. First one, uncontrollable food cravings. Explain that to me. I don't understand it but like I have been starving all day and like either shoveling food into my face or snacking on something like all day and I have no idea why and it's not like I mean it's like sugar cravings I guess I don't know if my body is trying to compensate or what's going on with that but it is majorly uncool I've kind of just given up at this point honestly because I'm like I don't have the willpower to fight it. Which takes me to misery number two, which is my willpower is like gone. Like I have, it feels like I've lost like 95% of my willpower and discipline. Like, like, like simple, basic, normal daily things are now very difficult. Like, you know when, you know when you're like really sick, you know, it's like, it looks like a, a lot of work to like get up from the couch and go to bed, you know? Like, that's what it feels like. It is the most bizarre feeling, and it's also really, really annoying because it's so hard to be efficient and productive. So I'm gonna take some ibuprofen, which I know is not good for me, but at this point, I don't care uh, because I wanna sleep and I'd like to get this pickaxe that's embedded in my brain out. I'm kinda tired of it. Uh, so that's gonna happen. Oh, that's the other thing. It's like eight o'clock. Why am I going to bed at eight o'clock? Like, what's up with that? I just hope this stuff that I, this, this annoyingness is gone soon because if this stays for the next like week, I'm gonna lose my mind uh, and I'm not gonna get anything done. 
which would not be good. That's uh, that's that, I guess. And just when I thought I couldn't get any worse, curveball number three. This was the first day that I had to work with my caffeine depravity, and it was sheer torture. The first mistake I made was to drink a heavily sugared beverage, compliments of my food cravings. I had no energy, a searing headache, I was nauseous and incredibly weak. My blood pressure plummeted and my vision actually began to go blurry in my right eye. I began seeing large black spots and lost most of my peripheral vision. My critical thinking at this point was laughable to say the least. Luckily, a friend was working with me and was able to help out quite a bit. Thankfully, we somehow made it home in one piece. I could barely walk, I was so exhausted. I crawled into bed and promptly slept for four hours straight, woke up for two hours, and then slept the rest of the night. This was the worst decision of my life. <laughs> I had no idea caffeine was this, like, this much of a grip on me. This is insane. Ugh. Oh. So I just finished like sleeping for four hours in the middle of the day because apparently my body is like stupid and doesn't know how to handle itself without caffeine. So that's fun. This is day four. Yes, day four. I was doing my day job most of the day and just halfway through it, it's just like, boom, complete shutdown. Like lost all energy, all focus, splitting headache and like couldn't focus, like super nauseated. It was terrible. Like it was absolutely terrible. So I got home at like four o'clock and was like, I need to sleep. So I took some ibuprofen for my headache, which is probably not a great idea, but I did it anyway. Jumped in bed and was like, I'll sleep for half an hour. Four hours later, and I still feel like garbage. <laughs> Supposedly after like day five, the symptoms aren't supposed to be as bad. So really banking on that. Ugh. As you can see from day two to four, I was progressively getting worse and more miserable. And then after about day four, uh, that was like kind of the peak of uh, misery, the, the awfulness of the withdrawal symptoms. And then the rest of the time from about day five to eight, everything went in reverse order. And I progressively started getting better and feeling slightly more normal. It was like kind of a hill graph, you know, where it's like, you know, starting off gradual and you're coming along, it's just, uh, you know, low attention span, headache, worse headache, partial blindness, and then, you know, headache, less of a headache and back down. So it was kind of this nice little up and down with day nine, me being pretty much back to normal with no side effects whatsoever. So that was the first nine days or so of this whole experiment. So I'd like to talk now about, you know, what, with the, what was the rest of my month like? What what happened? Did it? What kind of results did I have? The first thing that I noticed was that I slept way better, like solid as a rock, man. Like I would go to sleep and it was just like boom out until I woke up. And along with that, I needed more sleep, like seven and a half hours or seven hours, just absolutely didn't cut it. Uh, and if I got less than that or less than what I needed my body would severely punish me. Almost everything I mentioned before returned to normal. My willpower came back, my discipline improved to where basically the level it was before, uh, mental function and mental clarity, all of this stuff just returned to the way it was before. However, my baseline of productivity and energy had much less fluctuation in it. And that's what I liked most about this, this whole entire month is that there was much less ups and downs. And I think whenever we have kind of a slow, constant intake of caffeine, we don't really notice these highs and lows until you step out of it and you get off of it. Like I felt like my, my energy levels were, they stayed gradual for a lot longer. So like I could work on something for a very long period of time, long periods of focus without dramatic drops in energy. It was just kind of a slow, gradual thing. And I felt like my grind and my motivation was a lot stronger. Uh, like the muscle of, of grit was much more, yeah, it, it had a lot more endurance. So do I think that you should do a caffeine detox? 
Um, well, let me just say this. If you decide to do it, don't do it the way that I did it. Um, don't just go cold turkey because that was very undesirable <laughs> to say the least. And you know, okay, despite how terrible it was, I would recommend it. I, I would recommend a caffeine detox. And it's gonna be a lot harder than most people realize because there's caffeine in like a lot of things. Uh, most things have caffeine in them that you eat or drink. And so it's actually a little bit harder than I was anticipating. But if you do decide to do it, I would recommend, you know, switch to decaf coffee for the first, you know, couple days or a week um, before you completely drop off with no caffeine. Just, it'll kind of ease you into it. And I feel like if most people did that, it actually wouldn't be that bad. But it is important that you have a period of about 10 days with zero caffeine because that's, that's how long it takes for your body to completely detox and get it all out of your system because caffeine's half-life is like around five hours depending on how fast your body metabolizes it. And it can take a long time for your body to get you know, all of the hundreds of milligrams that it has in its system from the last however long completely out because it chops it in half and then it chops it in half and then it goes in half. And so like if you have 200 milligrams of caffeine in your system, five hours later you have 100 and then five hours later you have 50 and five hours later you have 25. Like, so that's why the process takes, you know, up to 10 days to get all of that out of your system. And you may be thinking, okay, decaf has like 98% of the caffeine taken out of it. You're getting like milligrams of caffeine. It's not that much. And I thought the same thing, but I did drink like one cup of decaf coffee um, about halfway through after all the cravings and everything was gone. I was like, all right, I'm just gonna try it, see what happens. It's decaf, there's no caffeine in it, right? Well, what was interesting is that as soon as I drank it, um, I didn't like, you know, oh, I need to have more caffeine. Like, no, I didn't get jitters or anything like that. But the side effects, at least some of them came back where my cravings, like again, just spiked where I was like, I just like food and sugar, like it was just like, I had to have it. And so as soon as that happened and I felt that, I was like, whoa, okay. Even just that tiny little bit was enough to trigger all those cravings again. And I was like, okay, well, we're not doing that again. <laughs> and I didn't realize this until a couple of days after I'd actually finished, but it's actually really good for your brain to go on a caffeine fast. Um, it's recommended that you do it at least every at least every two to three months. The reason for this is because your brain and your body is used to this, this chemical coming in and making it run faster. Caffeine speeds up your connections in your brain, so they fire faster, they're moving a lot quicker. And that's great if you're trying to have energy or mental clarity or you know work for long periods of time, it's, it's great. But what happens is that if this is constantly in your system, constantly speeding up your brain connections and making you go faster and faster and it never gets a chance to slow down which because of its half-life if you're drinking energy drinks or a latte or something every day not all of that gets out of your system in 24 hours it just doesn't and so it builds and builds and builds so your brain is constantly being triggered to, to fire at a much faster rate but what will happen is that if you do this for an extended period of time and you don't get it out it can actually cause mental fatigue because you've been requiring your brain to make connections and speed up at a much faster period of time for a long period of time it's kind of like running your car like close to the red line it's not good for it and it'll wear stuff out faster and so just learning that i was like whoa like for just for the longevity of my brain, I need to guard it more carefully. I need to protect it and care for it better. And this is just a small way that I can do that, but a really, really good way. And if you want a very real time example of how long it actually takes caffeine to get out of your system, there's a very fantastic app I would recommend to you that um, I've started using recently just as a way of making me more aware of this. And it's called High Coffee. And what this app does is it has a whole bunch of different drinks with different amounts of caffeine in it. So whenever you drink caffeine or drink coffee or tea or you know whatever, you log that into the app and then it will calculate its half-life and tell you when it'll get out of your system. And then it has graphs and charts and like, it, it gives you a really good visual, really good view of, okay, here's what's actually happening when I take caffeine in. It's like, whoa, it, it starts to click a little bit better. So will I do this again? Yes, I plan on it. It's a good exercise of discipline and willpower. Combined with the health benefits, I think it's something good that I'll implement on occasion.